Hi everyone! <laughs> it is very cold out here. Today I wanted to go over some things I've been thinking about, particularly this itemized list of 17 habits that I will be adopting before I turn 17. Before we jump into the habits, I kind of want to talk about why I am doing this and why I'm committing to this because any great thing starts with commitment. Also, okay, sorry about like it's a little windy out here, so I hope you guys don't hear that. I wake up every day and I am disappointed. I feel I feel terrible every single day I wake up and I almost want to stay in bed all day and do absolutely nothing which is obviously not the point of being alive. I am turning 17 in a week and I'm not a kid anymore. I can't keep participating in all of these childish immature vices that don't serve me. It really is time that I, I grow up and that I start acting like I am 17. Oh hey, uh, look, uh, I miraculously have a itemized list of 17 things. So let's just go over this. Starting off with number one is drinking water. Now I know we all hear drinking water is good for you. Drinking water is better for mental clarity. Drinking water is good for your body. It helps regulate stuff. We all know why drinking water is a good thing. What my goal is, is eight cups of water. It is so cold out here. <laughs> In order to achieve this goal, I will be setting a mason jar or water bottle out on my dresser the night before. So I'm all ready for the morning of when I first thing in the morning just grab my mason jar, grab my water bottle that's already filled with water and drink it. If you've been on the self-development side of YouTube, you probably have heard set your water bottle out on the dresser to set yourself up for the next morning it's an atomic habit like everyone knows this so number two is bed early wake up early guys this is such 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 a problem of mine i have been go going to bed so inconsistently going to bed late waking up late going to bed early waking up late going to bed late waking up early oh that is the that is the worst one right there <laughs> i will say I don't think it's the waking up early that's my problem because I can easily just set an alarm for the next morning and wake up, no problem. Okay, I'll paint you the picture of what happens late at night. I am doing whatever and then I decide, you know what, I've had a long day so I deserve a, a good scroll on YouTube. A scroll turns into two to three hours of doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> The reason why I'm scrolling on my phone is because I think I'll find this miraculous video that will completely change my life when I like I logically know that's probably not gonna happen and I also from experience know that that actually literally never happens. I don't remember any and I mean any of the videos that I watch on my phone late at night. So it's really useless and I need to stop doing it. So that's why I'm going to bed early and waking up early. Specifically, going to bed at 8.30 p.m. and then waking up at 4.30 a.m. 4.30 seems like a really arbitrary number, but I feel like every time that I wake up really early, I have this sense of clarity in my mind and no one is distracting me. I get to have all that time to myself. It kind of feels good also knowing that I'm basically the only person in like a 50 mile radius that's awake or something. Um, which is probably not true, but that's why I like to tell myself. It's that wind guys, it's that wind. <laughs> Number three is meditate. I'm gonna be doing this for at least 10 minutes because I have researched meditation over the past three years and the consensus is that 10 minutes is usually start seeing benefits of meditation. So moving on to number four, mostly whole foods and no sugar. I am vegan so the mostly whole foods 
thing isn't gonna be much of a problem for me. The sugar thing was a real, real, real big problem for me earlier this year because of all that really good holiday food that I would not take back for the world because as Amelie Desai says, memories over macros. The only thing that maybe I would take back is the fact that I kept up that eating habit. I was eating sugar literally first thing in the morning and I would have like three slices of sugar cinnamon toast every single day. Eventually, I started physically seeing the effects of the prolonged use of sugar in my diet. Now, just like water, sugar is one of those things that we all know is maybe not the best thing for us, but I feel like in order to step into being 17, I need to do the bare minimum, drink water, take out the sugar, okay? The whole foods thing is going to be easy for me, okay? that That's, that's really a no-brainer, but the sugar, we're changing that in 2024, guys. Number five is cleaning slash reminder resock schedule. Whatever that means. <laughs> I wrote that down wrong. Basically what that means is I want to kind of be more organized in my life. Not wake up and say, okay, what are we gonna do next? That kind of stresses me out. Especially since I'm going to commit to this whole big list of things, I need to have more structure in my life. Number six involves all of you wonderful people. I want to post more consistently. Now, I have multiple socials, so it's not just on YouTube, but for the YouTube aspect of this, I want to post one video a day. Or if I don't have the time to make a video that day, I'll compromise with three shorts. Just to build up that habit, because I have been a very inconsistent, terrible YouTube creator in the past. So I feel like this is my redemption year. Plus when I post the videos, they are going to be 25 minutes and over because what's the point of posting a video if it's like five minutes? Moving down from YouTube, I'm also going to be posting consistently on Pinterest. As a little shameless plug, you can follow me on Pinterest at Infinite Gravy or at Infinite You. I forgot the username that I made. That posting schedule is going to be from Monday to Thursday. One picture every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I also have a Goodreads and Wattpad account that you can check out if you want to. The usernames will be on the screen because I, I'm kind of blinking on them right now. Coming in at number seven is read. I've already made reading a consistent habit. But I want to challenge myself this year to read one book a week, which I believe is very, very manageable and obtainable. So I've already read three books this year, considering that it's coming to the end of February. Maybe that's not as impressive as I'm trying to make it seem. Obviously, I will be updating Goodreads Mondays and Sundays. If you'd like to know which book I'm reading this week, then Go on down to Goodreads. Number eight is use a commonplace journal. A commonplace journal, if you're not familiar with the concept, oh my god, why does that sound so condescending? <laughs> if you're not informed of the concept, okay. Commonplace journal is basically a journal where you literally put everything. You put to-dos, journal entry, grocery lists, anything and everything. And I really need this in my life because I have so many journals. Having a journal for this and then another journal for this and, a, and another third journal for this is just too much, okay? I need something to hold all of my deeper secrets, all of my everything. That's why I'm making this my commonplace journal. Anytime that I have an idea or I want to write something random down, then I will have a place for that. Now this is kind of big. And maybe it would be more ideal to have a pocket notebook, but I haven't come across any really good pocket notebooks that also have the, the style that I'm looking for. Th this is something I drew, by the way. So you can't find this um, anywhere. And that's what I liked about 
this journal is that it's completely customized by me. There is nothing that Notion or Evernote or Google Docs or any one of those note-taking apps slash, you know, websites can take away from the customization and the freedom you get with a commonplace journal. The brain is not for storing, it's for solving. Okay, number nine is 30 minutes for a creative hobby and 30 minutes for a cerebral hobby. Here are some examples of creative hobbies that are, that are specific to me. Crocheting, writing, sewing, etc. Now for the cerebral side, that's p playing piano, chess, reading. So really I can knock two birds out with one stone because I have to read one book a week. So maybe my cerebral hobby time kind of dips into that one book a week goal. I think it's important to have hobbies. Life isn't about work, okay? Some people would argue that maybe the play could be watching movies or playing video games, scrolling, but I don't feel like that is refreshing enough for your brain. Your brain needs to reset. Your brain needs to be doing something hands-on. Number 10 is create an actionable schedule every night, not just a to-do. I am going to be following the Eisenhower method because I do believe that it creates a very nice structure uh, that I don't have to think about and that I can just kind of brain dump everything then section it off categorize creating an actionable plan is really the only way that I'm gonna get all the stuff done if it's all up in the air then how do you expect to do it which is kind of what I'm telling myself so when I say you I mean I <laughs> my day definitely needs direction up until this whole you know 17 habits thing I kind of was just doing whatever it felt like oh you want to scroll on your phone for a few hours okay great that's fine oh now you want to go grab a snack and watch Gilmore Girls I mean Gilmore Girls is good but it's not productive for my goals okay for, for my specific goals doing whatever it's just not gonna cut it in 2024 so that's number 10 Number 11 is reflect and rate. I plan on reflecting and rating at the end of every day, at the end of every week, and at the end of every month. I can't tell you the amount of times that I sat down on my bed at the very end of the day and I was just like, what happened? Literally, I woke up today and now it's 12 a.m. and I'm on my phone and what happened today? Oop. <laughs> I'm shaking again. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what I was talking about, but my rating system is kind of complicated. I'll try to explain it for you guys though. Every productive thing that I get done in a day that moves me closer to my goal, so let's just say I study Spanish, okay, that's a point. I drink eight cups of water, okay, that's a point. And then at the very end of the day, I will add up all the points and that's my score for the day. So it's, I guess it's not like that complicated, but it's kind of the same thing for a week. So I'll, I'll, I'll take all of my days worth of scores and then I'll add those up and that's my score for the week. And then for the month, you know, I'll do the same thing. And this will definitely keep me in check. I kind of feel like when I am actively thinking about what I can do better and it, how I can get my score higher than the, the day before, it will allow me <laughs> to be more mindful about how I'm spending my time. I am terrible at time management, guys. I'm terrible at using it and spending it, and that's gonna be a real big problem for me in the future. So let's just not get to that point, okay? I'm going to reflect and rate today so that my tomorrow can be better. Number 12, study Spanish. Now I have a whole process that goes into studying Spanish. If you guys want me to go more in detail about my process with studying Spanish, my lazy language learner process, then I am more than happy to go through it with you guys in another video. But the only thing that I've kind of written down uh, for this one is that I am going to allot myself one hour for hardcore studying. And then throughout the day, I'm just going to be listening to podcasts in Spanish or just random vlogs or something. Just 
immersing myself, right? While I do other things in the background. For that hour, I think I might just do a Pomodoro. And I think Pomodoro will definitely help me focus. Number 13 is stretch and strength training. I already run two times a week because I'm a runner and I'm training for the NYC marathon. But I have definitely heard from a lot of successful runners that cross training is very, very good for your running and for your overall health. It prevents injuries. It helps you run better. It's just good. So I'm going to be doing strength training, not just running because I don't want to lose muscle trying to run 100 mile weeks and stuff. And then obviously stretching. Like I'm so bad at stretching guys. It's not about the actually doing it. It's the consistency. I am so stiff. Like I, oh, like even as we speak, there's this crack in my neck and it has been bothering me since 2021. <laughs> and I think that maybe that stiffness is coming from a lack of stretching. So my split is going to be running two times a week, more if I can help it, three days for strength training, and then seven days a week for stretching because you can never have enough of a good stretch. Okay, number 14, guys. Phone usage. We all knew that this one was coming. I use my phone way too much. Okay, it's how I spend that time on my phone. Your phone should only be used for education and as a tool, right? As a tool that would be like your calculator, flashlight, camera, you know, the basic features. Education is, is studying Spanish, for example. I will be using YouTube to study Spanish and that's educational, okay? I can justify that, but how can I justify four hours of scrolling? I can't, I can't. All I'm saying, guys, is that if I replaced my screen time with productive activities, I would be unstoppable. Number 15 is reward yourself by picking a wall and staring at it. But what does this mean? I'm always thinking about the next thing I'm going to be doing. It's always it's always this constant rolling ball down the hill. Like, sometimes I just need to press the brake and say, hey, we don't have to do anything. If you have a lull in between, you know, studying Spanish and eating. If there's that time in between, maybe you should just pick a wall and stare at it. That, that time would usually be spent poorly. Maybe I, in this in new year, should prioritize slowing life down. Not everything needs to be a rat race. I don't need to be filling every single moment of my time with something. I can just do nothing. And I can understand how crazy I sound right now. I'm delusional, but I am at peace. <laughs> Number 16 is go outside every day. Now, as you guys can see, I'm outside. <laughs> I tried to, to kind of make excuses for the, this one. I said to myself, what if it's raining? I'll take an umbrella outside. If it's cold, I'll wear a coat, a jacket, whatever. What if it's snowing? One minute is better than nothing. I mean, I didn't say that I was going to live out here, right? I said, just go outside. Look at the sun, touch grass. I don't know guys, I just know that whenever I'm outside, my mood is just skyrockets. I am just in such a better mood when I'm listening to the birds and looking at the sky. It's just so refreshing to be outside. And finally, we have come to our last bullet point. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit here and have you on a cliffhanger real quick, okay? No, no spend year. I'm done with the, with the whole spending thing. I'm just gonna save it. It's not a completely no spend year. About 95% save and then 5% use for, you know, whatever. Cause I'm only human. <laughs> Basically, that means that if I had $5, I'm saving $4.75 of it, 
and keeping 25 cents of that five dollars i don't have a spending problem guys if anything i'm a little too frugal the other day i was at michael's i swear i spent like literally an hour comparing two journals i even tried to buy this hello kitty weekly calendar and i really wish i did oh my god i put it back because i thought i wouldn't use it but then i had a dream about the hello kitty calendar later that night and i sorely regretted it yeah hopefully you guys stuck around for the video I have one more bonus, which is number 18, have fun. I want to make sure that this process is not only sustainable, but kind of fun. I mean, obviously there's going to be some days where I'm not going to want to do some of the things that I write here on the list. That doesn't mean that I shouldn't do it just because I don't want to, but it also shouldn't mean that this whole thing should cause me extra stress okay i'm already kind of stressed and overwhelmed about life so this should not add to it okay this should provide a crutch mindset is key i kind of feel like if doing the right thing then you're always playing it's never work so i'm going to be playing 24 7 because this is providing meaning and purpose to my life it's not work okay it's all just play and that's why mindset is key okay great guys you've made it to the end of the video in conclusion these are the 17 habits that i will be adopting starting tomorrow actually because next week is my birthday it's on the 27th yes i almost was a leap year baby you do, don't have to remind me liked this video like this video check out my pinterest goodreads and wattpad accounts if you would like to see more content like this kind of pinterest is kind of where i post lifestyle and just random pictures really aesthetic pictures obviously because that's the name of the game goodreads i will be updating you guys on all my newest reads and don't let my sunny demeanor make you think that i am a lenient reviewer because subscribe to this channel if you like this content i will be posting vlogs from now on if you guys have any videos that you want to see me post in the future then leave them down below in the comments if you've made it this far put a clown emoji in the comment section and with all that being said i hope you guys have a great 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 day and i will be seeing you guys tomorrow when i post my first real vlog of 2024. Bye. Bye. <laughs>